This is a chemical kinetics podcast in which the quantification of reaction rates will be discussed in terms of bimolecular collision theory. With the help of classical collision theory, we can derive the basic dependencies of the Arrhenius equation, which is used throughout chemical kinetics to calculate how fast molecules react. The core question is, how often do a bunch of hard spheres traveling through space collide? What do we need to know? We need to know how many there are, how large the spheres are, and how fast they're traveling. How often do two spheres collide? The key to answering this question is to calculate the volume that the moving spheres sweep out. Calculating the collision rate is then transformed to how much overlap there is between these volumes. When volumes overlap, there is a collision. In the total volume, the probability of overlap is the probability of collision. The key to solving this is a trick. Two spheres sweeping out of volume is the same as one big sphere of combined radii sweeping out of volume, with the other sphere being a single point. The probability of collision is related to the density of points and the volume swept out by the large sphere. The next question is how fast is this large volume moving through the density of points? A large sphere of radius sigma traveling with a speed v sweeps out a volume of area times velocity per second. If we have a concentration of these spheres, then each in this concentration is sweeping out the same volume. The volume of each sphere times the total concentration yields the volume per second being swept out. The other spheres, which have been transformed to a set of points, have a concentration or density of concentration of B. The frequency of them hitting is simply the volume swept out by A multiplied by the density of B, yielding the points hit per second, meaning the collisions per second. So how fast are these molecules or spheres moving? We can use maximal Boltzmann statistics given the average speed by integrating the velocity with the distribution shown in the graph, which is essentially the square root dependence on the temperature. This expression can be substituted to give the rate of collision depending on temperature. So in the final expression, we see the expected dependence on concentrations and also a dependence on temperature. So now we know how often two molecules collide. This is the first prerequisite to a reaction taking place. The molecules have to meet somewhere. The second prerequisite is that the bond making and breaking process also requires a minimal amount of energy, the activation energy E sub A. If the molecule has at least this much energy, then the molecules react to form products, otherwise known. The proportion of molecules at temperature G, T, that have an energy over a certain activation energy is the exponent of E sub A over RT. Combining the prerequisites of collision and activation energy, we have the derived expression close to the expected Arrhenius equation. The exact difference is the square root dependence on temperature. But this does not at, at, but this does at least justify the general Arrhenius equation, which has a dependence on three constants: the Arrhenius coefficient, the temperature coefficient, and the activation energy.